The purpose of this lesson is to explain to you how you can perform lookups between two dates. And just to explain to you what I mean, I have here some dates, the agent, and then the sales. And I want to select two dates like here, 1st of Jan and 12th of Jan. And I want to get here all the data points that are between those two dates. And the beauty of it is that if I select 15 Jan here, I'm only going to get the dates that are above 15 Jan. So I can select 19 Jan and get the information. Now, this is in Office 365. So if you have Office 365, try it. You're going to get advantage in terms of productivity, especially compared to your colleagues. If you know those features, if you don't have it, keep on watching this video because you're going to maybe get convinced to buy it because it's really a game changer. So let's go to the second data sheet where I have the same data set. The first thing I'm going to do is transform this into an Excel table. Why am I doing this? Because if you add data at the bottom of this, it will automatically reflect. You won't have to change your formulas. So let's go up. Let's click anywhere. Then we can do insert table. My table has headers and then you can call it data. Enter. If you see the formatting has changed, so you can just go here and change the formatting back. If you want it the way it was, just click here and you're fine. What I'm going to do is create two helper columns. In the first one, we're going to have the data that will go into the from. In the second one, we're going to have the data that goes into to. So let's start with from and let's use a formula called unique. So in this formula, I can just select my array. If I click here, because I have a table, it's data date, the column dates in my data table. If you're not using tables, you can just do control shift arrow down and you will select your data. Then I can close the parentheses because the other arguments are optional. Press enter and you get a bunch of dates. Now they look like numbers, but they are actually dates. So let's fix the formatting. We can select J and K and go under home, click here, number, and then we have dates and select what we want. So now we have dates. If you see the dates are not in order, so I can use another formula that is for Office 365, which is the sort. I don't need to fill any of the optional arguments because I want to sort it in ascending order and this is by default. So I can just close the parentheses, press enter, and you can see that the dates are now in ascending order. For two, as we said, if I select a date here, I want to have all the dates that are above this date. So what I could do is use filter. So filter, what is my array? I can click on J2 and then put hash. When I do this, it means give me all the data that is coming from this formula here. Then I do comma. What do I need to include? I need to get the whole data again, so J2 hash bigger than F2. I close my parentheses, enter, I get my dates. Once I have my dates, I can put them here. So let's go to data, click here, list, then we can select this one. As per what we have done here, I add the hash, it means I want all the data that is here. I press OK and you can see the dates. Let's do the same here. We click list. Then we click on the arrow, select this one, hash, and we are done. So now we can select, for example, 2 Jan. You can see that here I will have 6 Jan. I won't see the 1 Jan. So let's select 9 Jan here. We have a problem with formatting. So we use this time the format painter, click on it, click here. We are done with formatting. The only thing I have to do is display the data here. So I'm going to do filter, open parenthesis. Now my array will be everything. So I just can select this. So that's the data table, comma. What do I have to include? Basically, 
I have to include everything where the date is bigger or equal than 2 Jan and smaller or equal than 9 Jan. And for this, we're going to start with the first condition. So we open parentheses and we're going to select the date. So let's select all our dates. It has to be bigger or equal. Let's go up and let's select this one. Let's close the parentheses. Now, one key thing that you need to know is when you are doing end conditions in formulas like this, you have to use the asterisk signs. Why is that? I'm going to explain to you in a second. First of all, let's finish the formula and I will tell you. So we're going to do asterisk, open parenthesis, close parenthesis. We're going to copy the same thing here. But now instead of bigger than or equal F2, we want the date to be smaller than or equal to H2. And then comma, if it's empty, let's do double quotation, double quotation. So I want nothing. And let's close the parentheses and press enter. And you can see I'm getting the answer. Here I have a formatting problem. So same thing. I'm going to do control shift arrow down, arrow down again. And then I'm going to select under home this number date. And then we select our date and we are good. Now let me explain to you this one. So if I just take this one and press F9, what do you get? You get true and false. So every time a date is bigger or equal than 2 Jan, you have a true. If not, you will get a false. Let's press escape and let's select this one and check what happens. So again, F9, same thing. If it's smaller or equal than 9 Jan, you're going to get true, otherwise false. Let's take an example. 8 of March is bigger than 2 of Jan, so I'm going to get a true here, but it's not smaller than 9 of Jan, so I'm going to get a false. In Excel, true is equal to 1, false is equal to 0. I'm just going to format it like this to show you. So what will happen? When we are using the asterisk sign, we are multiplying. So a 1 times a 0 gives you a 0, which means that this data point, I don't want it. And it will work the same for all of them. The only case where you're going to get the data point is a data point that is, for example, in 6 of Jan. 6 of Jan is between 2 and 9 of Jan. So I'm getting a 1 here, a 1 here. Again, let's just fix the format. And then when you multiply, you get one. Once you get one, the data will get filtered and it will stay, it will appear in this table. So this is how it works. If, for example, I add something at the bottom, let's add, for example, a 2 of Jan, 2 Jan, John, let's say he sold 123. We go back up, it will automatically appear at the bottom why? Because we have a data table. If I want to be more fancy here, I can use sort, open parenthesis. This is my array. Then what is my sort index? It's one. And what is my sort order ascending? Let's close the parenthesis, press enter, and now they come in the right order. So another reminder, this only works for Office 365. If you don't have Office 365, and you liked it, you consider purchasing it. And let me know in the comment section whether you want to have a video where I do the same exercise, but with older versions of Excel. And as usual, if you really like this video, please like it, press the like button and subscribe to the channel.